Hola amigos, I am Pedro Boy de Pedro, aka Texan Spaniard on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, Texan Spaniard Studios on Patreon and Coffee, and this is the audio version of Pedro is Marking Out, a blog of wrestling reviews that you can find on my coffee at ko-fi.com slash Texan Spaniard Studios. If you want to read the text-only versions, go there, and if you want to just hear them in audio, keep listening to this. And if you feel like donating, you can do that too at my coffee all donations are appreciated thanks and on to the blog read hola amigos trying something a little different instead of just ratings how about some full-on reviews i watched ring of honor wrestling television episode 497 and here is what i thought of it Ring of Honor Wrestling episode 497 starts off with Mike Bennett versus Beer City Bruiser. I dug the promos that led us into the match, and the angle we got a recap of that led to it was some simply but effectively done pro wrestling stuff. Beer City Bruiser seems in worse shape than when I saw Ring of Honor live in January of 2019. He's definitely not moving around very well, but you know what? Despite his mobility issues, his wrestling was pretty solid here. Bennett was okay, though his selling of his ankle was selective at times, not the most consistent, i.e. he was doing super kicks and drop kicks with it, even though it had been worked over and they had a storyline that he was coming off of nearly being crippled in the past because of some ankle injury. Disqualification finish when Bear City Bru Bruiser goes for an empty beer bottle that he breaks, then Matt Taven runs to the ring to prevent BCB from using it on Bennett. Not a good match, was just okay, but that was fine to be honest. They're furthering the angles involved, and I'm curious to see the eventual Beer City Brawlers versus Taven Bennett match, and to see if BCB's partner uh, will go along with the New Hill attitude, or if we were being set up for Beer City Brawlers explosion. Either way, sounds fun. Two stars. A pure wrestling gauntlet match. Uh, starts off with Dante Caballero versus Will Ferrara. Decent little match, mostly technical wrestling, though execution wasn't always the best, with a story of Ferrara being the teacher trainer of Caballero and Dante kind of losing his temper, patience, and making himself vulnerable for stuff. They did a wrist lock driver spot, which I had never seen before. The idea of the move was cool, but it also looked like Caballero landed right on his head, so it's kind of scary looking, but. Dante sold the shoulder and arm like it was being ripped off of him afterwards to the end of the match, so good job on that. The arm injury was maintained, and that vulnerability, along with Dante's lack of experience and impatience, played a factor in the finish with Ferrara getting the win. Decent stuff, and now Will Ferrara will face the world-famous Cheeseburger! So during Ferrari Caballero, they mentioned that the last time Ferrari had been in singles action in Ring of Honor was in a match with No Honor versus Cheeseburger. So of course, Ferrari's next opponent is the world famous Cheeseburger. And uh, this was some decent stuff. Good even. It was competitive technical wrestling between two former tag team partners and then rivals who definitely did not want to lose against the other and it showed. Ferrari forced CB to use one of his rope breaks which further put over Ferrara's arm submissions, since we had seen him wreck Caballero with those in the match before. But uh, CB found an opening to get in the Sugar Bear roll-up, and S Cheeseburger gets the win. That was fun and good stuff. Want to see a full-on match between them under pure rules in the future now. So Cheeseburger up next has to face Eric Martin. Ring of Honor Dojo getting quite the showcase in this episode, it seems. I don't know who Eric Martin is. I didn't know who Caballero or Fierro, Ferrara were either, to be honest. But he looks like a young Drew Galloway fan wannabe. And Cheeseburger made him look pretty darn good out there. He was running roughshod over the diminutive Cheeseburger. The majority of this match, uh, Martin looked like he was going to just stomp through CB easily. CB was forced to use up his last two remaining rope breaks by Martin. But it did buy him at least time to be able to catch Martin in an opening for a very painful looking submission that got world famous Cheeseburger the win. This was fun, fun stuff, and I was into it. I'm loving the Pure Rules gauntlet. So up next, Cheeseburger has to face Wheeler Utah. 
Cheeseburger has used up all his rope breaks and was getting run through pretty good in that last match, so when his student, Wheeler Yuta, comes out to face him, he tries to make short work of this match with flash pins and roll-ups left and right. But Yuta's pretty good at this stuff too, it seems, and he hangs with his teacher, catches the tired mentor in a huge German suplex, and then climbs to the top to hit some leap off the top into a DDT thing that looked pretty impressive. Cheeseburger sells it like death, and Yuta advances in just over three minutes. Not a lot to this, but in the story of the bigger picture, i.e. this gauntlet match, this worked pretty well. So who will be the final entrant in the Pure Rules gauntlet match? Fred Yehai. How do you say his name? Yehai? 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 That guy, Fred Yehai? Yehai? This was some good stuff, however you say his name. This is some good stuff. Yehai had gone for a Koji clutch, but Yuta had escaped via targeting Yehai's ankle, which led to some ankle-based offense. They went outside the ring, and Yehai hit a scary-looking exploder suplex. Yuta's head seemed to narrowly avoid being driven into the floor. Back and forth technical wrestling and big moves attempted, Yehai hit an absolutely brutal-looking double foot stomp to the back of Yuta's head to set up going for the Koji clutch again. Once more, Yuta targeted the ankle for escape, but this time Yehai rolled out, maintained control, and then put the submission on in the other direction so his ankle was away from Utah's reach, and Wheeler was forced to tap. I wish it had been longer because they had some chemistry, but this was a fitting end for this gauntlet match. I enjoyed this gauntlet match, and the pure rules thing is pretty awesome. For the entire gauntlet match, I'm going three stars. Was a lot of fun. I love one-hour pro wrestling shows. Easy to digest, one-hour bites of simply built storylines with payoffs and good simple wrestling matches. Nothing convoluted and stupid. Very fun watch. Catch y'all next time I catch more wrestling.